So welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. Hopefully by now you're all subscribed to the channel and some of you will become patrons through our Patreon page as well which supports the association and helps us do more and more videos and collect more and more items that we can share with you. So this video is the first one when you've seen me in uniform. So not much of a uniform this evening perhaps, but a uniform all the same. So denims, uh, workwear, overalls effectively. Uh, two part suit used to be worn over battle dress uniform, um, effectively denim material, harder wearing so that it doesn't get ruined. And the headdress I'm wearing is a general service cap, uh, is worn sort of 1943 through to the end of the war and the cap badge is that of the Middlesex Regiment, the badge backing there for the Middlesex Regiment as well and a portrayal that we've done before, the 2nd Battalion, the Middlesex Regiment, which were the Divisional Machine Gun Battalion of the 3rd Division, and landed in Northwest Europe, fought through to the end of the war. We've got loads of information about them, um, and it's something that is probably our go-to Northwest Europe uh, pre display if, we, if we're asked to do so. So why am I in denims? Why am I in workwear? So I'm going to sit and I'm going to show you uh, the disassembly and the reassembly of the Vickers Machine Gun. Some of you will have watched the video I did of the disassembly and the reassembly of the lock, the small, the breech block part of the Vickers. I did that blindfolded and this, I'm going to do the same with the whole gun now. So I'm going to follow the process. I'm going to narrate it. I didn't record it and narrate it at the time because I've done it outside so we get better light. Um, but I've, I'm going to narrate it for you. And just to explain uh, how I did it, basically what I used was a 303 bandolier. 303 ammunition bandolier, which is quite a you know, coarse material. You can't see through it. Uh, Pre-prepared a knot over my head, looped round, that formed my blindfold. I had ready with me a combination tool, the Vickers Mark I combination tool, and I didn't need it. Some of the components were, 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 weren't fully tightened, um, so I was able to do those with my hands, but I had it with me. And this is the gun, one of our firing guns in the collection, and this is what I disassembled and reassembled. So. Hopefully you enjoy the video and it's worth saying that you're going to see much more of uh, me in uniform as we go through and do the small arms training manual uh, instruction series. Won't always be denims, uh, preferably not actually. This was just because it's quite oily. Um, you'll see this in battle dress, fighting order uh, and, and service dress as well for the instructors. So you know, moving forward, much more of the same and I hope you like it. Please do comment and like and obviously subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think. Here we go. So I'm going to sit down behind the gun in the normal uh, you know, firing position there and you know, get ready, accommodation tool just to my left so I know where that is, hands on the grips to start with, headdress off, off to one side and I'll put the bandolier blindfold on. Worked quite well actually, you know, although always tempted to just try and look out the bottom or something like that. Ended up having my eyes closed most of the time anyway. So that's on quite tight and you can see I really can't see anything. So first thing to do is to remove the lock. It requires that quarter turn to the left or the right. Um, then I need to put that cover back down, swing the gun round. So I'm undoing the clamp at the front, take the gun round and take that muzzle attachment off. So you've got the plaque pin for the muzzle attachment and then you've got that comes off in one piece you've then got the cup to unscrew off of the barrel once i know where those bits are you know that's one of the main things here trying to remember where you've put bits Next, swing that back around take the feed block out feed block down to my right hand side recover you know close that cover fumbled a bit here should have just gone straight for the fusey look i didn't need that top cover open fusey comes off needs that uh off down to the left hand side that stays reassembled now i can remove the t-fixing pin Drop down the rear cross piece, start to take the barrel, and the two thing, the two uh, side covers come out there before I can remove the recoiling po portions. So that's all going to come out as one piece. The both side plates and the barrel lean right back, get them off to one side, and I'm going to take take those off because you know that's it's not fully disassembled yet. But once I've got those taken off the trunnions of the barrel, I can st you know just compose myself. Hands there, completely disassembled. So to start the reassembly, I've got to put that barrel back in and you can see uh, that I'm trying to guide it in there, but I miss the uh, the trunnion, go above. So that's in the feed block space at the moment. It takes me a moment to realise, come back out, start to guide it back down there and I can get that in through the trunnion of the gun and um, pick up both of my side plates and reassemble those on the on the. Um, 
on the barrel there. So you're trying to get that left-hand side one on first. That right-hand side one, actually, I've got to put round the um, put round the barrel, but also get the crank fitted through to the right-hand side as well. So once that's all sort of clicked into place, um, you know, it takes it takes a little bit of time uh, to get it sort of feeling right. But once it's all there and it all goes in, it all just slides back in, crank handle forward. But then I have to the connecting rod had folded under, so I needed to take that back out. Um, that's stuck up, so that all goes in quite nicely. Reach down for the right hand roller um, piece there, and then the so that goes in the right hand side, and then I'm going to reach down and find my left hand side one with the you've got to make sure that the um, uh, the the stud that the fusey spring fits on is on the outside. I can pick up the T fixing piece and reassemble the cross piece. I'm then going to put the fusey back on. So I've got to make sure this is the right way up, otherwise it won't work at all. So that needs to go in, um, you know, into the other end of the crank there. Manage to get that in. You've then got to get the two studs at the front and the one stud at the back all nicely um, fitted forward. I had to re-tighten the, the, the tripod at that point because it was moving too much. Should have probably done that earlier. Um, but yeah, that's fixed nicely. So then oh, I tried to put that down with the connecting rod up, put the feed block back in. So feed block nice and easily uh, slots in there well, close that front cover, undo the clamp, spin it back round, put the muzzle cup back on. Muzzle cup just goes on finger tight in this case, didn't need the uh, cocking handle, the whole muzzle attachment out of case and fits over i've then got the pin and i actually picked up the cork uh didn't mean to do that got the pin this was a bit fiddly to try and find the the the, the hole where the pin fits in on the muzzle attachment i'd actually reached around um sort of too far and was trying to put it in one too far away but once i found it and got it put it put back in there it fitted nicely i can then reclamp it forward uh, reclamp the gun facing forward lift that top cover pull the connecting rod up and put the uh lock back on in this case, the bottom cover is actually closed, so it won't go forward. So I needed to lift that extractor forward, put that down. Then I'm going to open the bottom cover so I can just... It's quite far forward, so I can cock it, just to check everything's working. And there we go. Cocked again, checked it's working. Everything seems to have all been done up properly and all job done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please do remember to subscribe and uh, and like the video, make any comments, you know, clearly fumbled. That was my first time of doing it, so I'm quite pleased with myself there. Let's say thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to, and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.